Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments. This is a continuation of the formula breakdown series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Now to the challenge at hand, which is challenge 73, most played finals. So this came up during the World Cup. Qatar 2022, so that's why it is football or soccer related. But whether you're a soccer fan or not, you will like this one. Okay, so it says find the pair of teams who have played finals more than once against each other. Okay, so here you have all the years and the finalists, right? So now we are checking France versus Croatia. Have they played, you know, any other time before 2018? Well, the answer is no, because I know that. But let me show you an example here. You can see Germany and Argentina, right? You can see Germany and Argentina. You can see Argentina and Germany. These three are essentially the same because you have the same set of two teams. But the challenge here is that on one side is Argentina, on the other side is Germany because, yes, there was a time that, you know, Argentina won. The other two times, Germany won. But these three are one and the same. So what you must be able to do to make this work is you must be able to sort each of the rows alphabetically so that you can easily identify duplicates. Because if you don't do that, Argentina Germany will not be picked up as Germany Argentina. So what makes sense is for each row, you sort it alphabetically. Once you are able to do that, you will then see, you know, the list as is, and you can then identify the duplicates and proceed from there. Let me go to a new sheet and kind of walk you through my idea. Let's start off first by trying to sort just France, Croatia. So I can use a sort function. I select France and Croatia. The important thing to do here is to note that you are sorting by columns. You know, typically we sort by row, right? From top to bottom. But now we are sorting left to right. So just select the true there, which is one. Okay. Now you can see that instead of France, Croatia, by sorting from left to right, it gives you what? Croatia, France. It would have been very nice if you could just give Excel, you know, this long list and give you this long list and have it give you the results row by row. But that doesn't happen. And that's the reason why you have to resort to like a lambda helper function, you know, to help make that work. And that function has been named aptly. It is called by row. Okay. So what does it do? It performs the calculations by row and returns the result row wise. Meaning that if you give it, for example, you know, 10 rows, you know, it's going to perform the calculation on each row and it's going to give you a result which would have 10 rows. But each row, you know, is based on the calculation on that row. Okay, so English, but easier when you see it. So let's see. Let's do it by row, for example. And let's give it the entire array, meaning from B2 to C22, all the way. Okay, now you pull up your lambda and you have a variable. Your variable, I always like to think of this as an iterator, the variable that goes from row to row. Now, you must know that X in this case represents the row right it represents each row it doesn't represent each element it doesn't represent france it represents france and croatia because you've given it b2 to c2 let me just prove this to you let's make the calculation concat of x what does this mean if x represents the row concat of x means concat all the elements on that row so let's see what the result is see that so it concatenates france and croatia if there were three columns in there it will concatenate the three columns in that row so this is the result so x represents each row so what do you want to do on each row you want to sort each row right so you are sorting x but the important thing like i said here is that you're sorting it what by column okay if you try to spill this result out you get a calculation error because of you know excel's current challenges with nested arrays but let's leave that what you see here is the result is that you have the first team, you have a hyphen, and you have the second team. So essentially, once you've done this sort, this sort would give you, you know, both teams like we could see, Croatia, France. What I can then do is use a text join around it, and I can make my delimiter a hyphen. Okay, so text join, make my delimiter a hyphen, right? Okay, and then once I do that, I can close the text join, close the bracket on lambda, close on by row. Okay, so now you see the result. It is sorted everywhere. So you see that these two, even though one of them was Germany, Argentina, now they are both Argentina, Germany. The beautiful thing about dynamic arrays and the fact that things spill to the worksheet is that you can see it. And once you can see, you know where you're headed. And once you know where you are, it's easier to know how to get to your destination. 
I, I really feel that this is the power of dynamic arrays. The fact that I can see, you know, all the intermediate steps live on the worksheet, not having to press F9 and just see what's going on. I can see it at every step. Then I take it further. So now, once you get to this point, you can proceed in different ways. Some people may choose to remove the duplicates from here, but don't forget if it was just about removing the duplicate, that's easy, but you still need to get, you know, a count. So you may choose to still maintain, you know, the data as is, but the point is whether you choose to remove the duplicates at this point, you can still get the answer or you decide to proceed with the duplicates. So what I want to do next is I want to know the count. I want to get a count of how many times each of these appear in this entire list. Okay, now you know that we are interested in only the pairs that play themselves more than once. Okay, so I need to have a count of each of these. The first function that comes to mind is count if, but count if most times struggles when you know it's confused between whether I should see a range or I should see an array. So sometimes you know we kind of stay away, you know, from um, you know the count if in this context. We can use you know some product. You remember that we can use some product to do a count, right? That's one thing we used to always do then, which means that now we can also use a sum because sum and sum product are essentially working in the same way. So you could do something like, say, sum, you know, this entire thing. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Let's, okay, sum this, or let's say sum where this is equal to, let's say this, for example. Let me just start off with this one. Right, it says zero. But yeah, why is that happening? That's because this results in a Boolean, right? So you can just use a double unary, for example, to convert it to uh, numbers. Okay, so now you can see the result. So it's telling us that Croatia, France, of course, once. Argentina, Germany happens three times. If you go down again to Argentina, Germany, it would also be three. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use, you know, within my expression. I'm going to use this in place of a count if just because i already know that there will be an issue not because count if is a wrong function to go with okay so let's come back here and um okay yeah let's let's come back to you know where we started from and let me now let me make this into a variable so let me say let a represent this by row so what it means is that anywhere if i just put a it's giving me the same result. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I just want to um, use that because I need to reference it. So now let's go to the next row. Uh, Control Shift U, expand the formula bar. Okay. So let's create another variable called B. So what do we want B to be? We want B to be essentially that um, the count I just showed you, right? Using the sum. So what I want to do is I want to go element by element. Technically, I could use by row, but I could also use map and say I'm going, you know, through all this you are seeing on the screen, row by row, and I am getting a count of how many times they appear, but I'm doing the sum trick to get the count to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to say map. So I'm looking through um, all the elements in this array here, which I have represented as A, right? So that's A. Okay, so I pull up a lambda. I could give another variable here. I could use maybe a y. And what am I saying for each of them? I'm trying to do, you know, a sum where a, a is everything you're seeing here, where everything you're seeing here is equals to y, where y represents each of the elements at every point in time. So y will first of all represent the first pair here, y will represent the next pair, the next pair, and the result will be spilled out that way. But don't forget that we need to do the double unary, right? Because if you do a sum of a boolean, you don't get the result. Let's close the sum. Let's close the map. Lambda. Then let's close the map. Let me output B so that you can see what B is. So everybody can see what B is. Okay? So B is just what? You know, a count. Right? If you want to see both of them together, maybe it may be better to then use an H stack. Horizontally stack. Meaning that show me a a will give me those peers argentina germany and all that then b will give me the count okay so that we can see both at the same time that may be better for most people right so now you see where we are so we are seeing it's one formula but you know spilling into multiple rows and columns so you can see each of them and you can see the um the counts okay so at this point you can use a filter what will you do with the filter you filter out only the ones the ones you filter out, the ones that are um, not more than one, right? So you want to see only the ones that are greater than one. So meaning that on top of this H stack, H stack is the result you are seeing here. I can put a filter. I'll say filter this H stack 
And what should be the criteria for filtering? You want when this is greater than 1. This column is greater than 1. And don't forget that that column is your B, right? It's B that gave us all those numbers. So you are just saying you want to see where B is greater than 1. That's essentially what you want. You close the bracket here on the filter. You close the bracket on the left. Now the list has reduced to this. At this point, you probably can see your answer already, right? Because it's just duplicates, that's all at this point. So you know that a unique function will come in in some way to make this work. But the important thing here is that I think that the answers, of course, are also sorted, you know, from top, you know, to bottom, okay? So again, it's just that Argentina happens to be first alphabetically and that's why it's coming up. But what I want to do to ensure that it, whenever the result is being published, it would give me the one that has the highest number of times first, is I'm going to introduce a sort around it, okay? So I'm going to say sort this result that you're seeing. You can see the result. Now it's saying sort index. I want to sort it by column 2, right? Because column 2 is where you have the numbers. I want to sort it by column 2. And how am I sorting it? I think I have a bracket wrong there. So yeah, sort it by 2. And the sort order is I want it descending so that it starts from, you know, the highest one and goes down that way. So close the bracket on the sort, close on the left. Let's see. Okay, so you see it now. So once you have this, we can put a unique around it. Some people do, you know, the unique before the sort. Some do the sort before the unique. But anyway, just breaking it out to see, you know, what it looks like. So I can put a unique here, all right? And I close the bracket on the left and I have a result. So if at any point, you know, any of these changes again, so let me just make this, let me make this Argentina and let me make this Germany. See what will happen now. You can see that my result has updated to give me what for. Um, if there's another pair that happened, okay, let's say Germany, Netherlands. So let's just put Netherlands here. Yeah. Okay. You can see that automatically because that is not happening more than once. There's Netherlands, Germany here, and there's Germany, Netherlands here. Based on that, it's now coming up. So your formula is so dynamic that as the data changes, you know your results, you know, updates accordingly. The beautiful thing, like I say, is that if you can introduce, you know, as in the concept of tables and turn this into an Excel table, that way it's dynamic in such a way that if I now add another year, 2022, for example, you know, and this was the pair that played in the finals, and it's of course more than once. So as it updates too, you know, this would also you know, updates accordingly. So it's not the easiest of formulas, but if you follow it sequentially, you know, it kind of makes sense. So I hope, you know, you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.